Hey guys, welcome back to the second episode of Mapping in Starrod. We're going to go over some textures, render modes, and uh, background stuff today. And right now I have a version 3 open, uh, just for a second. I'm going to show you how to quickly swap your texture archives. And then I'm going to switch to version 4 because I have something open there. So go to the top right menu here. You can see your texture archive that you currently have open. Right now you can see I have DGB, which is from the original game. Um, forget where this is, this is probably somewhere in chapter 3. Uh, maybe Tabo Bobo's castle, but you see I've changed the textures completely. So I've overridden all the textures to uh, match what I wanted to do for this area. And that's what I typically do when I'm starting a new area, is I will just take an existing texture archive and replace all the textures with what I want. And so if you want to change the texture archive you're currently in, you can just go up here to the top left to change texture archive. And you have a bunch of options here. Some of these are uh, my own that I've made, but you can also, f you'll, you'll only see the original ones um, from, from PM64. Just select any one that you want to replace, so I'll replace Arn. So now you see there's no textures applied anymore because this is a new texture archive. And all the textures that are in that archive in the folder are going to show up here. And uh, you'll have to edit those in Photoshop or whatever, whatever software you use. And if you want to change the background, I have no background or current, or I do have a background. You can turn that off. You can turn it on and you can change your background to any of the backgrounds from the original. And again, you can change these as well. Go over that a little bit more in a second. This is a custom one. But yeah, so that's how you swap your texture archives and your backgrounds. And uh, I'm going to close this now because it's lagging quite a bit. I'm going to go to my other star rod that I have here. This is version 4. So I'm going to open up Photoshop as well. So let's go to how to actually modify textures. So let's say that I want to use GBG as my texture archive for my map. And these are not original uh, original textures. I've already replaced it, but let's just say I want to. Let's just say they are the original, and I want to replace one of them. So, say I want to replace S Road here. So I move this in here. Make whatever modifications I want to make. Obviously, this is just for the video. Say I just want to make a green square. So, if you're just making, um, if there's no transparency. Uh, if there's no uh, yeah, if there's no transparency, you just go to index color. However, it is in your software. It's going to differ uh, differ between programs, of course. For this is Photoshop Elements. I think it's probably pretty similar for regular Photoshop. Um, I just do local perceptual. the The key thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you index your texture at 16 colors like this, and then you just save it as that texture. Uh, in the archive. This is for CI4 textures. So basically anything that doesn't have transparency is going to be CI4. There's also RGBA. Um, I'm not going to delve too much into that, but there's typically you're just going to use CI4 for anything that's opaque, doesn't have any transparency. And if it does have transparency, then you can save that as um, I8 or IA8 or 16 depending on the color amount. Um, and then you don't have to index that. You don't want to index that at all. You just save it as that image. And if that's a little bit confusing, I recommend just kind of looking at uh, these, all, all the settings for these textures and stuff. Look at uh, a texture that is similar to what you want to do see how it's in here, how it's uh, written in here, if it's IA16 or if it's I4 or whatever, and uh, just copy that. Just the, the key thing to remember is that CI4 is for 
anything that doesn't have transparency. Uh, it can have fully transparent pixels, like a bush has uh, transparent pixels around it. But anything that's like in between zero and full opacity is going to be CI4. And then you see the actual settings on here. Um, so there's there's three to keep in mind for the wraps. So this is your horizontal wrap and your vertical wrap. So it's going to be how the texture repeats in the UV editor. So let's take uh, this for example. So on the horizontal plane, you'll see it's repeating constantly. So on here, that would be represented as repeat. And if you want to mirror it, so uh, it would essentially just mirror the, the texture infinitely over and over again. Then you write down a mirror as your setting instead. For clamp, it won't repeat at all. It'll just, um, whatever the the last pixels on the edge of the the bounds of the texture is, it will just repeat that infinitely. So if there's no pixels on the edge of the texture, it will just be nothing infinitely. See if I have any texture like that. I can kind of like this, for example. So this is clamp, and because there's invisible pixels along the edge, it'll just repeat infinite the uh, nothingness, essentially. Okay, and um, filter, combine, you don't generally want to change those. Uh, format, again, explain that, CI4, IA, I8, and um, yeah, so whatever texture you change, you want to make sure you update these settings for how you want it to look. Uh, in the editor, and if you want to add new ones, you can do that too. You just uh, copy paste at the bottom name of the new texture you added, uh, edit all that, and you want to do it in you want to do it in this in your um, in the actual texture archive file. So this one you. Uh, for whatever archive you're using, the text file in it. And you also want to do the same thing for it in uh, the text file that's outside of it as well. So there's two of them. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so once you have your textures and your texture archive that you're happy with, so this is my uh, NCV texture archive that I have. Um, once you have that, you have to set up the render modes. So I have a bunch of different render modes going on in this map. Go over a few key ones here. We'll go down the list. So o, uh, zero 01, surface, opaque, is going to be for basically anything that doesn't have transparency. So it's fully opaque. It's basically just like your typical surface model. Um, could be like this floor, for example, is just zero one, and you have a couple of them. So there's surface opaque, no anti-aliasing. So there's uh, it won't do any anti-aliasing on the edges. O uh, four surface opaque, no um, Z. What is it called? Z buffering. Z buffering. No Z buffering. Essentially, what that is. As you'll see here, I have this demo here. These three blocks. This one is O1. These are both O1. And I have this floor set up as O4. And what it's going to do is it's going to render, um, it's going to stop uh, Z buffering. So I, I would recommend looking at what Z buffering is. But essentially, what's going to happen here is it's going to render these cubes here in front of this uh, this this floor here, even though it's inside of the ground. And I'll show you exactly how that looks in game. So you'll see you can you can actually see the bottom of the cube going into the ground even though it should be uh, eclipsed by the ground. 
and there's a there's a really good site here for the N64 render mode, so I'll tell you what renders in front of each other. I'll leave that in the description of the video. You can go over that. Go over some more here. So there's a uh, 11 surface uh, transparency, XLU's transparency, layer one, layer two, and layer three. And it's how it sounds. Layer two will render in front of layer one, and layer three will render in front of layer two. Layer three, importantly, will also render in front of uh, 1A and pretty much everything. It's going to prioritize rendering, the game is going to prioritize rendering 22 over basically everything in the game. And you want to use those for anything that has transparency. It doesn't have to have transparency. I could do 11 for this bush, for example. That's fine. I do 0D just because it's less likely. So when you're working with XLU, sometimes you'll have um, the game, if, it's, if you're not positioning the centers of those models correctly, it will it will go back and forth between what it wants to render first and it can it can cause like flashy like texture issues in your maps uh, you have to you want to make sure that you have that hierarchy set up perfectly and I'll, I'll go over that a little bit too but if you do 0d 0d will always render that just fine it will render it in front or behind um, 22 or any of the other XLU transparency uh, render modes Okay, uh, surface XLU, no anti-aliasing, no uh, Z buffering, we went over that. Alpha test, OD, went over that as well. I've never used 0F, not completely sure how that works. I've never seen it used either, so I don't think it's totally necessary, but if somebody wants to correct me on that, feel free in the comments. Um, Alpha test, no ZB. Okay. And then there's decal, decal opaque, no anti-aliasing, decal transparency, and decal no anti-aliasing. So these are important as well. So this is what I use for paths. So essentially, you see this path here is, it's, a, it's Z fighting or Y fighting with this ground here. And it's not going to look like this in game because the render mode I have for it is set to 1A, which is decal transparency. And it has to be transparency because you see I have transparency uh, UV paint on the edge of this here. And what decal does is essentially it just, it will, even if it's inside of another model, it will render it in front of it, kind of like putting a sticker on it in a sense. The only one that I've consistently had issues with is the opaque render mode version of this. So I, I use 1A for basically anything I want to just apply to a model, like a path, um, without having to actually like change the geometry of it all. The one I've had problems with is 05, which is the opaque version. This is the transparency version, 1A. I don't know what it is with the opaque decal, but I've had issues with it rendering uh, on top of models. It either works or it doesn't. Don't know what it is with that. If somebody can figure out what that is, I will gladly make an update on that. Uh, so usually I just use 1A for basically anything that I want to put onto another model like this path. Okay, and then we'll go into the other ones here. Uh, there's not much else. Those are the ones I went over what I usually use. Intersecting, I don't, again, I don't totally know what it does. I have, this is an intersecting model here. I wanted to see what it would look like. Again, it doesn't really seem like it did anything. So it almost certainly has a use. I just don't know what it is. There's cloud as well. Again, I don't really use cloud. Um, yeah, so that's the those are the render modes, and then for this, so there's certain cases with textures like um, I'll go to another map for example. So for this portal here that I used in the prologue snapshot for Wua, 
Uh, you see it looks fine. It has transparency all around it, but if you actually go to the texture here, it has a black background. And if I try to apply the same texture to, say, like this ground, for example, you see the black shows up. If I change this to 01, again, you see the black shows up. So you want to make sure that in your in your texture archive here, in your, in your TXA file, you want to go to, so this one's called portal. You want to go to the portal texture and you want to make it sure it's I8. And then you want to make sure, I believe I use 16, yeah, 16 for it. So that's how you get rid of those black borders on those textures. Okay, and one last thing. So I'll go back to the other map. One last very uh, useful trick that you want to do is if you have multiple models that you want to set a certain render mode to, so for example, all these leaves here, they're already the render mode I want, but let's say they're all uh, just render mode one. And I want to make sure, there's actually an easier way to do the selection too. You can just select by texture, do this, select all models, just like that. And now if I want to make all these render modes, I could go one by one and just change it in the bottom right here. But easier way to do it is just go to modify selected, go to set render mode at the bottom here, and just change it to whatever you want and it will automatically update them all. Just like that. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.